Do your job. A simple phrase, but one that can cause frustration when not done well and can cause ease when done well. The Minnesota Wild did their job against the Montreal Canadiens. After a 3-1 to win, we discuss what went right and what this team can build off of going forward today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we dissect a 3-1 to one win over the Montreal Canadiens in which the Wild did their jobs and came away with a pretty impressive win. We talk about a rebound for the defense and the goaltending and a look at how the new line combos did for the Wild against the Canadians. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and a 3-1 to one win, a nice, clean 3-1 to one win for the Minnesota Wild, a score by an opponent I didn't think I would utter at this point in the season, haven't had a chance to utter at this point in the season, and it, I think, can all be summed up like this. On a night in which Kirill Kaprizov, Matt Zuccarello, and Matt Boldy were relatively quiet, uh, in terms of points, the Minnesota Wilds got production from secondary scorers, got a great goalie performance, got great defense, and looked like the team that we expected to see at the start of the season. It has been a long road to get here, but as we talked about, in the lead up to yesterday's game, uh, the Wild using an opportunity for a couple of extra days in Montreal to simply hit the reset button to try to flush what happened to start the season and to just move forward and to try to get back to what we expect from this team as the season plays on. Through this game against the Canadians, it looks as though that strategy has paid off. Uh, the Wilds. Just up and down the checklists did things much better than they have throughout the course of the season. Defensively just looked way more organized and uh, did a much better job of preventing shots from getting through to Marc-Andre Fleury. Fleury reciprocated by playing his best game of the season and uh, stopping the shots that did get through. Uh, from getting into the net, and it didn't have to be Kirill Kaprizov or Matt Zuccarello or Matt Boldy that got it done in this one tonight. Jewel Eriksson Eck with two goals, Brandon Duhame with a goal himself, and that was all the Wild needed. Now, this is tricky because this is a Montreal Canadiens team that is on the right track but not there yet, I think is probably the best way to put it. But at the same time, the Wilds coming into this one really couldn't take anything for granted or guaranteed uh, on this road trip. And so the Wilds could very easily have come into this one and done the same things that they did and come away with a loss. And so the attention to detail on defense, the commitment to being physical and playing pucks, playing to opponents with bodies, not with sticks. Uh, it all up and down the list just looked markedly better for this Minnesota Wild team. And so this is what we have been hoping to see since the season started was a look at a team that can commit to defense and goaltending and can come away with some of these closer wins uh, against a team like the Canadians. The, the penalty kill did their job. The defense did their job. The goaltending did their job. And the offense did their job in coming away with a nice team win here in this one. So uh, there is 
as we will dissect in full, there's a lot to like, and we've got some intriguing things to discuss as to uh, how the new look lineup performed uh, in this one this evening. But all in all, a really nice win and uh, kind of an exhale from me, exhale from those that cover this team, and I'm sure an exhale for the fans as well, because while the road trip continues with a tough game on Thursday, as Kevin Malone of The Office said, it's just nice to win one. So we uh, will take it, absolutely, and uh, try to build off of it heading into Thursday's game against the Ottawa Senators. All in all, a lot of really nice things to take away from this one, and we want to focus in especially on the defense and the goaltending. And so a uh, short segment to start the show today, but we're really going to dive in to the goaltending. We're really going to dive into the defense. And so uh, we will continue to dissect today's episode uh, of Locked on Wild, uh, dissecting a 3-1 to one win over the Montreal Canadiens. And that continues after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. They are your number one source for betting for the NFL, for college football, and the start of the NBA season. You can find all the latest player developments, plus team matchups, news, and podcasts, and in depth analysis on every big game. And as always, betonline.net remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to their website today, or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action, all of which can be found at betonline.net, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out Game to Game for the NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every single result. Locked on Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis from only Locked on Wild uh, experts can deliver. Follow Game to Game on the Locked On NHL podcast available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. A 3-1 to one win for the Minnesota Wilds over the Montreal Canadiens. And let's start with the goaltending because that was one of the biggest question marks heading into this game. Marc-Andre Fleury had not been good to start the season, and he turns in his best performance not only of this year, but one of his better performances in his entire Minnesota Wild tenure. Just one goal allowed. That one goal, by the way, had a chance to see it multiple times. The first time, I was a little annoyed because I was like, how do you give up that kind of a goal? Cole Caulfield just sends one towards the net, and Flurry just looks completely out of position, um, and it slides past him into the net for the goal. But having a chance to see the replay, it deflects off of Jake Middleton's stick. And so Flurry was ready to play it at the angle in which it was shot. But then the deflection happens and uh, it's not in that spot anymore. So that was the only blemish on Flurry's record in this one, a night in which he faced uh, three penalty, uh, three power plays from the Montreal Canadiens, a penalty shot and a couple of uh, extended rushes by the Canadians down the stretch. And Fleury did a really good job of just kind of being calm in the net and being decisive with what he was doing with the puck. Uh, there is one play in particular in which the Canadians had uh, a little bit of a breakaway chance, but the Wild did a good job of closing it off and forcing an early shot. And Flurry, instead of you know, maybe opting to just kick it off to the side for a rebound attempt, just right from the get-go, you could tell he had decided that he was just going to smother the puck and, uh, and not let anything further happen um, beyond that. And that might be something that 
just seems for those uh, that wa- have watched hockey for a long time, that may seem like I'm throwing out just kind of a basic concept, but nothing has really been easy about what the uh, the wild goaltenders have done so far this season. And so to see Flurry commit to doing something and then follow through on doing it, as opposed to kind of being caught in between uh, with the puck on the way to meet him. Uh, that was, I think, a big, I think that was a big development in this game tonight. And of course, you had the penalty shot by the Canadians and Flurry, dare I say, played it with a little bit of swagger, kicking it to the side with his blocker and then doing the little blocker shake after uh, denying the Canadians the opportunity there. Now on that play, John Merrill, the pursuing defenseman, ends up pulling, I think it was Mike Hoffman down right in front of the net. And I get it at that point. You're trying to stop a breakaway opportunity, but Merrill probably thinking that he at the very at the very most drew a penalty, but then you get the penalty shot and turns out Mark Andre Fleury was up for it. So he makes the save and uh, just up and down the um, the stat sheet tonight. Really impressive from Flurry. And we we talked about the Vancouver game. We talked about the Boston game, about Flurry giving this team good enough goaltending to win. So first couple of games of the season, goaltending was bad. And you looked at like, what are we going to, how are we going to move this thing forward if we continue to get not even the basic level of goaltending from Flurry or from Philip Gustafson. And then you you segment it and you go into Vancouver and Boston. Given the team good enough goaltending to win in those cases and the Wild went 1-0-1. And now you can put this one into a different category in which Flurry uh played a large part in the Wilds coming away with the win in this game. He stopped all 10 of the Canadians' high-danger scoring opportunities, and uh, his goal saved above expected. He was 1.85 goals saved above expected. So the Canadians scored one goal. They were expected to score just under three based off of how things played out throughout the game. But Fleury only gave up the one. And so... It was a great performance for him. The biggest question just continues to be, has he turned the corner? Was this a wild team really just kind of taking some frustration out on the Canadians? How how does this play out going forward? But if we see, I think, Flurry being decisive and a little more calm in the net, there's nothing wrong with sprawling out to make big saves and he had one in particular right in front of the net that was misplayed by the wild defense and flurry was able to kind of reach through and poke it away with his stick poking it into the corner getting it away from the net allowing everybody a chance to regroup so making those decisive kind of plays through the chaos to uh, prevent something disastrous from happening right in front of the net And there were a couple of other instances in which he did make those big sprawling saves to rob the Canadians of uh, opportunities. But by and large, he stuck to the crease and just reacted to the puck being played as opposed to trying to anticipate what was going to happen. And so I think mentally he was just way more locked in to this one than he had been over the, uh, the previous couple of games. And so those are the kinds of things that lead you to believe that it is something that can be built off of going forward. Now there aren't going to be performances like this every game. There aren't going to be roses all the way through. The hope is that you can meet the defense somewhere in the middle and the defense did a much better job of number one, Blocking shots, season high in blocked shots in uh, this one tonight against the Canadians. So that certainly helps. But they just did a better job, a much better job of seeing where the puck was, reacting to the puck, playing the puck, and just not allowing Montreal to really 
establish firm footing in the wild defensive zone. They protected it like it was their territory, um, something that they hadn't done up to that point in the season. And so these new look D pairings, uh, I think there's something to build off of there because you you look up and down the lineup. Kalen Addison responded well to a promotion uh, playing alongside Jonas Brodeen. Brodeen played better himself. And so that's a positive to build off of going forward. The Spurgeon Middleton pairing played better themselves. And, you know, Matt Dumba still had some moments that make you just kind of shake your head, uh, especially down the stretch. But tip of the cap to John Merrill, who seemed like he was there to bail him out every time something started to kind of go kitty wampus. So the D pairings just seem like much more relaxed fits um, all night long. And so I think another thing I would like to see from this um, from this team is to not just say, okay, now we've had a good game. Everybody is, um, everybody did what they needed to do. So let's go back to what we were doing, and get everybody back into their normal spots. Ride with this for a little bit. Ride with these line combos and see what happens. If players continue to perform well, then you end up sticking with them. If, let's say, if Matt Dumba's play improves to the point that you think about moving him up into the lineup, well, let's look at where Kalen Addison is at and uh, and see how he's doing to see if it warrants a switch or maybe this is just how we do this as a way to kind of protect Dumba from um, any potential injury this year. Maybe he just ends up being a third-line guy to uh, take some pressure off of him, and maybe Addison is just ready for that uh, that role going forward. Um, again, a lot of positives, and on a night in which the wild power play didn't score, some of that has to do with uh, Mr. Jake Allen over on the uh, the other end of the ice. All the other parts of this team that we were concerned about heading into this game ended up stepping up big in this one to uh, to allow the team to come away with a clean and tidy and nice three to one win over the Montreal Canadiens. Now to finish up today's show, let's take a look at how the new look line combos went because. There were some interesting things that happened. And so uh, we're going to run down the list and see how the uh, the new look lines did as we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Just want to remind the listeners, in addition to our fine show, Lockdown Wild, you can find the other Lockdown Sports Minnesota podcasts on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7 and absolutely free of charge. So make sure to download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. So we had some new look line pairings, and of course, the Jewel Erickson Eck, Brandon Duhame, and Ryan Hartman line ends up scoring all three goals, just like we expected to see. I find it interesting that that was the line that seemed to click for all the scoring. You know, you had a nice feed to uh, Brandon Duhame early on that uh, that led to a shot that sailed past the net, but the rebound kicks out, and who's there waiting to uh, to redirect it? Although Jake Allen redirected it himself, uh, Jewel Erickson Eck there to do just that, and so. He gets the first goal of the game. The Brandon Duhame goal, the second goal of the game, uh, that was a nifty feed. That one came from Freddie Goudreau, and Duhame does the rest to make it 2 nothing at that point, or 2-1 to one at that point. And then empty netter by Jewel Eriksson Ek, who basically nearly gets taken down uh, on his way to the net by the Canadians, but he still scores to make it 3-1. to one. Just, I think, allowing Jewel Eriksson Eck to be the focal point of a line 
with a physical player in Brandon Duhame and uh, a player in Ryan Hartman who can bring some defense himself. That line was the one that was tasked with trying to slow down Cole Caulfield and uh, Nick Suzuki and any number of the other skilled players that the Canadians have on that roster. And they did their job in this one. The Caulfield goal was a greasy one that deflected off of Jake Middleton's stick. But this was another big thing that was going to have to happen for this team in order to uh, to come away with some wins this season after this rough stretch to start it. The secondary scoring had to step up. It couldn't just all be Kirill Kaprizov or Matt Boldy or Matt Zuccarello. And Jewel Erickson Eck with a couple, Brandon Duhame with another. That needs to continue to happen. This team is so good when they're able to roll at you with four different lines that can bring a little something different and can uh, can compete out there with anybody. So the fact that we saw some really good things from that Erickson Eck line, Ryan Hartman ended up as a plus three, so that line did their thing defensively. Also really liked what we saw from the Marcus Foligno, Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi line. Boldy was a maniac in this game with eight shots on net, but you saw, I think, what Marcus Foligno can bring to this mix if he ends up being the guy with Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi is that he is that security guard, that bodyguard for this line. And, you know, it, it's not like you're asking Felino to play a different role on this team because he is the one that if somebody tries to uh, to start a ruckus, he's going to be the one that finishes it for this wild team. But it makes you as an opponent think twice about trying to do anything, uh, any sort of funny business to either Matt Boldy or Marco Rossi, because if you do that while Marcus Foligno's out on the ice, you're going to be notified of the retaliation immediately. And so he can add some of that sneaky scoring that he has in addition to being the battering ram for those two and the guy that if somebody from the other team tries to, uh, to get in an extra shove, uh, he's going to end up washing their face in the ice. And so I, I liked what we saw from that line. And then you have the uh, you have the fourth line of Steele, Jost, and, Duhane, or, and uh, Dewar. Those guys continue to battle on a nightly basis. And it just it felt like there were points at which every single line that was out there, every single line, it felt like there were points where they all picked up some wins in this one tonight. You look at Freddie Goudreau as uh, the center for Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello for now. Seven of eight on face-offs. So if he can just continue, if he can just be a guy who can get things started with that line on the ice, if he can win face-offs, if he can contribute offensively and let Kaprizov and Zuccarello do their thing, that line's going to be fine. Ultimately, and I saw Judd Zolgad tweet about this, and I I fully agree with him on that, is that you've got a guy in Ryan Hartman. You've got a guy in Freddie Goudreau. They're good players, but Marco Rossi ultimately is just the best playmaking center that this team has. And so once he gets comfortable and starts to really feel like he is, you know, a full part of this team on the ice, off the ice. He's definitely a full part of this team. It's just once he starts to gain that confidence on the ice, I'm not going to be shocked if we see that combination given an opportunity to try to gel because I think he is going to be able to allow Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello even further freedom and creativity. Uh, and is going to be able to reciprocate that on those two. And if that line can get going, if that line combo could get going for this team, that's going to be a dangerous one because we saw it. We've seen it uh, already so far this year as Matt Boldy can create his own offense. And so ultimately, 
you know, would we like to see Boldy and Rossi joined at the hip for a good majority of this season? Yes, but if Rossi's on that line with Boldy, or if he's on the uh, the top line with Kaprizov and Zuccarello, top six minutes for Rossi is the just that's the ultimate goal as this season continues to progress. So if he continues to uh, to get some confidence and to build off of his performances. He's going to make his way there, and then uh, I think we are in for a treat. So it's, grand scheme of things, it's one game, but pretty much every box that we were looking for was checked uh, in this one. So uh, it's it's easy to feel good about what we saw against the Montreal Canadiens, even though, as I said, it's a team that is on the right track, but maybe not necessarily there yet. So all in all, a good win for the Wild and something to build upon heading into a very tough game on Thursday against the Ottawa Senators. That is going to wrap up our episode of Lockdown Wild for today. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day as well. Locked on Sports Today is available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts, just like Locked on Wild. So make sure that you give us a follow on your favorite podcast platforms, subscribe on YouTube, and turn the notifications on so you don't miss out on any of our future videos, recapping games, talking to experts, guest interviews, you name it, we've got it as we guide you through the 2022-2023 season here on Locked on Wild. So make sure you don't miss a minute of it. We have new episodes coming every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.